good afternoon everyone so we are going to discuss a bit more uh, through kind of tutorial format what diffuse optics is and and how we can learn more in a means i will also do some demos on how we how we can understand this very important concept that is diffuse optics in biophotonics so i will get into presentation mode do you see my right screen yes okay diffuse optics to understand diffuse optics you know the english word diffuse right it's diffuse means it getting diffused everywhere so it's not taking one direction but it is randomly moving in uh, various direction at a microscopic level so that's what diffusion means and this concept is there in many fields and when you take it to optics it means certain something certain thing which we will which we will be understanding through this presentation <clears throat> so just to start with if you want to understand diffuse optics probably it's better to start with understanding what does linear optics mean so in linear optics means <clears throat> what happens is that you just shine light and there are three things uh, that can happen either there is a specular reflection that is the light is just reflected uh, at the angle same as the incident angle or part of light is transmitted through the medium and it reflects on the other side but if the refract depending on the refract index of the medium that it is propagating one more phenomenon that can happen i mean the difference between n n2 and n1 uh, that is total internal reflection if n2 is much higher than n1 then there is a chance at certain angle uh, the light will start getting totally total internally reflected so this is li li linear optics and it is quite clean and we learn it everywhere uh, in optics course so what does diffuse optics mean so here you can see uh, means through illustration there is a cuvette with water inside and when you shine a green laser there is a just straight line as you can see in the top as well there is a straight line i'm trying to open my cursor yeah it's going to take straight line what happens if you add a drop of milk or any diffusive diffuse liquid what's going to happen is it won't be straight anymore but it will create a surface uh, a broad light like this the reason is more because it's illustrated on the top figure and there are microscopic particles which act like surface by itself since they are uh, bigger than the wavelength of light it gets scattered so it keep diffusing means it it keep randomly reflecting out it or transmitting it in random direction that will give rise to a random walk of photons that is incident to say you can see clearly in the white and uh, gif image where you have the light that is completely going through when there is clear water as you start adding milk it becoming more and more diffused that's simply because light is taking random walk why this concept is very important for us so probably you would have heard in the other lecture a uh, few days ago the light that we see around is diffusing so if you look at clouds why they are not transparent why can't we see stars in the morning yes of course and there is scattering of light that is blue light but also we can't see beyond the clouds because it's it's diffusing there are uh, droplets of rain uh, droplets, droplets of water around 20 micron or something that act like a diffusive media that scatters sunlight that makes it look white why it's white because sun spectrum has all wavelengths and you will have seen foam in the sea of course it's the same because uh, the light is getting scattered and it looks white and to just point out anything that you see around the wall that you see like it's paint right that's also scattering basically to say that it's a, such a big industry uh, there are so many patents just to understand how to make it more scattering so everything that you see around that's because uh, it looks it is diffusive and that's what it makes it beautiful like we are very diffusive and the nature is all diffusive the leaf the flower everything is diffusive they are not transparent the reason again quite simple so when we say this biosphere microscopic world they are all made of things that are of micron size sometimes few microns to tens of microns that means light gets scattered that gives that makes the light not to transmit rather take a random walk Uh, which means we can't see through them so why we are interested on the in this in diffuse optics is because for because of the same point that nature is diffusive so we humans are diffusive if we can understand how light propagates 
in a diffusive media like human tissue. Sorry, just give me a second. Yeah, if we can understand how light, light propagates in a diffusive media like human tissue, uh, then we can understand how the internal parts of our tissue uh, is behaving, which can be used for diagnostic or therapeutic or for other other medical purposes. So that is the idea of diffuse optics in biophotonics. So said this. Uh, okay, I want to go to next slide. Yes. So said this. Now you understand why we need to do diffuse optics, right? The diffuse optics is the core uh, for us to understand human better. I mean the light propagation of in human tissue better, so that we can develop better devices based on light for human uh, human health healthcare purposes. So the so just to mention what happens in a diffuse media. So you have or in a human tissue, which is also diffusing. You incident incident the light, then you have a specular reflection, of course, but there can be scattering, that is diffuse reflectance. So that is a diffusion process, which we just saw before. So that's the scattering part. Or we can encounter something called absorption. Absorption, we all know, it's, it's nothing but attenuation of light. But we will see a bit more detailed next in next slides. Then what else can happen? There can be light that is absorbed that re-emits as fluorescence or phosphorescence. Otherwise, the light can get elastically, uh, in, inelastically or elastically get scattered, and one of the phenomenon that can take place is Raman. So these are all the various things that can happen in a human tissue. Right now, for this uh, for this particular presentation, I will focus on absorption and scattering. So said this, let's take uh, individually absorption and scattering and see how this actually works. Okay, another thing can happen as well as diffuse transmittance. So when you say absorption, uh, means so anything that is invented in science that has a history, basically, means how someone absorbs something and they try to define it through a mathematical formulation, which will enable it to be extended to any other field or any number of any number of more examples. So for example, when you say absorption, what people typically absorb is uh, when you pass the light through a absorbing medium, what happens is the light is attenuating with time because the light is getting absorbed by that particular medium, if it is trans in a transparent medium, I mean. And when they try to make a plot, it looks like this. It's an exponential decay. And obviously, if it is exponential decay, then you can model it. So saying like, okay, I naught is the incident light and I1 is the light at any point that is purely going to be dependent. It's an exponential decay. And on top, you put absorption times length. So when you say that uh, length is nothing but how far it has traveled, when you multiply by absorption, then you get the value of I1. So how absorption is then defined? Uh, uh, so how we can try to make sense of this particular equation? It's quite simple. When length is equal to one by times the absorption value, in simple terms, you can just think of it like, it is a time where only 37% of light is survived. So rest of the light is gone. It's simply because he has 2.7 when you divide it, 37% uh, is what is left and rest of it is gone at the length that is equivalent to one by absorption value. So this is how the absorption works. So there's one phenomena in diffuse optics. Let's go on to the next one. What happens when we have scattering? And what happens if you have more scattering or less scattering? So just say the point. So it all depends on number of scatterers. You can imagine like this. So I am at Tyndall right now, and the railway station, Kent station, um, it's it's on the other side of city. And there are many streets. If someone doesn't, means let's say it's not only me, I have like 100 people with me here. If someone doesn't give me Google Maps and they just let all 100 of us leave Tyndall and reach the Kent station, number of people will reach Kent station will be purely dependent on number of crossroads that we encounter. If we have too many crossroads, that means we will get scattered. Maybe very few people will be reaching Kent Station. If there is only one road that reaches uh, the railway station and there is no crossroad at all, that means everyone will reach. So you can imagine like if you have only one road that is reaching to the destination without any crossroad, that's kind of linear optics. If you have too many roads and you don't have a Google map, 
That means many people is going to get scattered and they will never reach, reach the railway station. That's the example of scattering. So taking that example, the crossroad is nothing but the scatterer in our human body. In that case, it's basically cells and organelles uh, and other microscopic particle in human tissue. If it is more, you will have very less amount of light transmitting. Uh, if it is less, then you have more chances that the light will transmit through. So it's just an illustration of having different number of scatterers. So this I can show probably even through demo to represent those three mediums. I just got these three different material, uh, which are scattering of uh, three different levels. I hope you can see my, my, see me, right? Probably yes. Okay. Yeah. So I have this green laser pointer. So this medium is scattering much lesser. You can see, right? So the light, green light laser pointer that I sent into it, it creates a kind of um, circle or sphere where it is it, where it is propagating the light. That's quite big. But if you see in this one, it has become smaller because this has much more scatterers. And I have one more sample. It is scattering even more. There you will see it's even smaller. Did you see that? So that's basically the example. So through demo, as you can see, if you have more scattering, you have less light that is being transmitted. And so, so this, let's go on to the next part. We covered the concept of absorption and scattering. And there is a way to also get to the formulation of absorption, how it works. It's nothing but how much light is being absorbed over, uh, how much light is trans transmitted over a small length. From there, you can also do a derivation and come back to the beer lambert's law. I don't know why it went to the last slide. It should be at this slide. We covered the concept of scattering. Then we go, how you can explore this concept. I showed it through the phantoms that I have in my hand. But if you see in biophotonics box that you all received, there is also recipes and LEDs that you can play around. What you can do is again, you can make these phantoms by adding different amount of milk or the scatterer and try to see what happens when you add more scatterer. Basically it's going to scatter too much light and it's not going to pass through. This is what happens and each human is different. Sometimes light can pass through completely. Sometimes it passes less. As far as we understand how it propagates, we can always compensate and calibrate and find ways to measure human property uh, properties that are of interest, medical interest at depth. Uh, so let's go on to the next slide. Then when we say scattering, uh, there is two different kinds of scattering. It's quite different. You all would have read already about uh, Raleigh scattering, why sky looks blue. The reason is simply because the Raleigh scattering changes as lambda to the power four. Since blue light has shorter wavelength, uh, what happens is that it scatters more than other any other wavelength in, from the sun. So that's why the sky looks blue. But on the other hand, cloud, I mean, we saw just in that image, it doesn't look blue, it looks white because it's not exactly Rayleigh scattering, but it's me scattering. Me scattering doesn't scale as lambda to the power four, uh, rather it's very much dependent on the size of the scatterers and the concentration of the scatterer. Uh, so that is lambda to the power B, it is defined that way. And the B value, as I said, it depends on the size of the scatterer. And this phenomenon typically happens when the particle size is greater than the wavelength that we are probing. And as I said, cloud has droplets that are of, on an average 20 microns or more. So that is much more than the wavelength of light, which is hundreds of nanometer. That's why the phenomenon is me and it looks white because it's not lambda to the power four, rather it's lambda to the power small number. So in that case, how we will define uh, the scattering value. So the actual perceived scattering is forward scattered. As you can see in this particular liquid, the light is going forward. Uh, it's not like in all direction. That's what it's shown in also pictorially in this me scattering uh, diagram. And that can be defined as one minus G. So the G is nothing but the anisotropic factor. That means simply anisotropy is not being isotropic. So you can define how, how worsely it is anisotropic. Then you can get a scattering value that you will be per perceiving that we call it as a reduced scattering coefficient, which you will get to learn more in your workshops, when the workshop that's going to follow. 
So I said this, now we are more or less clear, right? How scattering works and how absorption works, works uh, in a diffusive media and why we need to learn them. And we can define one more term, simply saying effective attenuation. There is nothing but, you know, whether you lose light because of absorption, that is light being observed, or you lose light because of scattering, doesn't matter what is the reason, you are losing light. So that means you can define one more new term, simply saying a mu effective, which is defined as root of three mu a and mu s dash. So that's one more way to just call it, instead of calling absorption or scattering uh, losses, you can simply say effective attenuation. So let's get on to the next concept that is quite interesting and which is very important, that is penetration depth. Why this is important is because how deep we can probe in human body or in a human tissue depends on how deep the light can go and how well you can see the light that is coming from that particular depth. Again, this is related to absorption and scattering uh, of the medium. And just to see, I show again an example. If you think this as human tissue surface and I, if I shine light here, you can see now it can penetrate this much deep. But on the other hand, this is the extreme, other extreme sample, which scatters too much. When I drop light here, it penetrates only that much deep. So that is what is the simple way to mention penetration depth. Penetration depth is nothing but uh, how deep we will be reaching. And why it is important is also illustrated in this figure. You can see this black color. This you can consider it as a kind of tumor. So if your light can't penetrate as deep as your tumor, then what happens is that you don't have a chance to detect that particular tumor simply because uh, the light is not penetrating that uh, to the depth that of interest. So that is one more reason why, so this can be sorted from both direction. Either you have, so we can't change that issue, right? It's scattering is fixed. Either you have more light or you have much sensitive detector, which can detect light coming from the very, very deeper parts of the parts of the tissue. Again, this particular thing you can explore by using your biophotonics kit. So in my case, I have a very homogeneous phantom in my hand. You can create something like that by using the phantom kit. And I can, I can see the light is creating a good sphere, right? What will happen uh, if you put an inclusion in between? It's not going to be spherical anymore. It's going to have a kind of, um, means a region where there is no light because there is the inclusion. You can consider this inclusion as kind of, uh, how to say, a tumor. So in the past, they used to do uh, early in high part of 19th century and so on. Um, they just use light by shining it behind the tissue to look at the tumors. If not here, especially for breast cancer, it's more uh, easier uh, by doing a light-based palpability test. It's not only that, it's so what I show is like more qualitative, it's not quantifying, but you can quantify further if you use this kind of app where you can use your mobile phone's uh, sensor, existing sensor, to send the light through the phantom that you will create uh, by using simple torchlight or mobile phone light or the LEDs that you will be creating. And you can use the app to measure how much light you are uh, getting back and you can make some interesting plots to understand how light is diffusing in the medium, which is very, very important for us to understand how light propagates in tissue. So said this, uh, I'm getting more, uh, I hope I convinced you, not convinced you, means I, I hope I gave you some highlights of how light is propagating in a diffusive medium, and also why it's very, very important for us to understand how it propagates. And said this, I will open, I would like to ask you these two questions. And like one thing is like, after shining white light in our hand, which color has the, as, which color will transmit more? That is the question and why? So you have a mobile phone, as you can see, I can just open. And this light looks white, but if I put my finger, what does it look like? It looks red. Why it looks red? Why don't, why can't it look like green? Why can't it look blue? Because sky is blue, right? It should look blue. That would be a cool color as well. Why not? Uh, the hint is more related to, so I can just give you a hint. You have a lot more absorption in green wavelength because of hemoglobin in blood, and you have a lot less absorption at 600 nanometer. Probably you might know the, by now the answer to the question. Simply it's absorbing too much. That means all light is absorbed except the red light. 
So with this, I want like to also introduce introduce you to uh, some other concepts. I'm not going to get into details of it. So what I showed you through demo and so on is very, how to say, uh, hand-waving explanation. Uh, I told you the better we understand the human tissue, we can better explore it by using light, which means we can produ produce better tools uh, that are of medical importance to probe deep into tissue. So to make it much more quantif to quantify it better, you will learn more things during the workshop that's going to follow uh, the, this session, uh, this session in days to come. But simply to explain uh, mathematically, so if you take a small area, small cube, like human tissue or whichever it is, so for example, I can take, it's big enough, but so when I shine light, what are the various things that can happen? So one thing is light that can get inside and you can count how much light that is coming out and you can say um, how much light it's getting absorbed and how much light is getting scattered and how much light that got scattered is getting back again into the medium. So that's what basically it's a energy balance equation. Uh, it's used designed mainly for in the beginning for nuclear physics in a nuclear reactor. They used to simulate how the new, how the how the how the particles are propagating. But we can use it diffusing. Uh, we can use the same thing for uh, understanding tissue as well. So as I said, like it's about the first part that is how much light is getting in and getting out, the, the radiance of light and how much is the losses related to absorption and scattering. Then we can define how much light that went outside medium because there is scattering, there is a chance that light can get back again into this area. So the addition due to the light that is getting back into this small area. And also Q is nothing but a source term. In case if you have something inside that that is actually creating new photons and that can be accounted as well. So it's basically a balance. The change in radiance is nothing but the way it is defined on the right hand side. So then if you solve it further, because the equation is much more complex by assuming that you have a very scattering medium, what do I mean by that or diffusive medium is you have scattering lot, lot higher than absorption. How much more higher? At least 10 times. That will allow us to have solution to the previous equation, which will boil down it further into this simple form. And so where phi is the flux, of the flux of light um, and, and D is nothing but diffusion constant and S is the source term. So more details of this, you will get to know when you when we are going to uh, have the workshop and get, get prepared. As I said, like first at first level, we need to understand at a hand waving level, okay, how the human tissue behaves. At further level, if we want to create the real impact, we need to understand how how, how we can quantify it so that we can get uh, values that are quantifiable, that are of medical importance, uh, so that we can use for diagnostic or therapeutic purposes. With this, I would like to thank everyone for your patient listening.